Now I'm going to cook um, a lovely warm dish. Okay, it's, it's basically rhubarb, apple, and custard with a crumble. Okay, so it's two red apples. Okay, they can be any type of red apples, from Gala, um, Pink Ladies, Brayburns. But red apples, when they cook down, they hold their form a bit more. So, like a green apple, a Granny Smith, and when you cook it down, there's an awful lot of water content in it, and they can go into a puree. But a red, red apple for a compote or something like that, it'll, it'll hold its shape a little bit better. So, we peel the top. It's much faster when you're doing cases of them. Do the bottom, and then we just go top to bottom like so. Just a silly little thing you pick up over the years, but as I said, when you're doing cases and cases of apples, trust me, you save hours. So now what you want to do, just chop the apple up into nice small dice, okay? So I'll just cut around the core, and then get your apple pieces, chop them up into nice small chunks. Just like that. So once they're all chopped up, in a saucepan, just over a low heat, drop in your apples. A sprinkle of sugar, about 10% sort of sugar to apples, okay, but just sprinkle it. What you want, what the sugar's going to do, the sugar's going to draw all the moisture and all the juice out of the apples, okay, and it'll help it break down. With your cinnamon, just a pinch of, I have the ground cinnamon. Give it another little bit. You just put like a tablespoon or two tablespoons of water in from the start, and that'll just prevent it from sticking to the base of the pot, create a bit of steam so it'll get the cooking process moving along. So once you've mixed all that around, cinnamon all's mixed, just pop a lid on it and allow the steam. So you just bring it up. When you notice all the steam uh, developing on the top of the lid, you turn your heat down then to its lowest setting and you just let it stew away. It's important to have the lid on it because all that moisture is going to evaporate into the air with heat. And for your apples to break down and to make a compote, you need that moisture in there so they sort of stew in their own juices. So what I'm going to do, just slice the rhubarb up into small, small pieces. So again, the exact same process. I put a splash of water in the base of the little pot here, just a little bit. Gonna put all this rhubarb in. And with rhubarb then, you want about 30% about sugar. So you need an awful lot more sugar. So you'd sprinkle that sugar in from the start. And again, just stir it all around. Make sure all your rhubarb pieces is coated in sugar. And like the apples, you just pop a lid on and you just allow it to steam. See the apple, it's only on there now about two or three minutes, but you can see that juice already coming out of the apple. Like there's lots of juice there. And that's because you have the lid on, okay? And it's very important. If you have your heat too high, your pot will be boiling at such a rapid speed, you won't be able to retain all that juice with inside it. So it's important you have your down low, nice tight fitting lid and just let it tick away. The apple will take about 10 minutes, even five minutes. The rhubarb will take about 10 minutes. So, Get your walnuts and almonds. So just raw, nothing done to them. I'm just going to chop them up. You can crush them, you can wrap them in a towel and bang them, whatever way, depending on the quantity that you're doing. But you just chop them up into nice small pieces. So now, now that they're all chopped up, okay, so within here now, what I'm going to do is add in some flour, just normal regular flour, some sugar, some caster sugar. Mix all your ingredients around. So all your nuts, flour and sugar is all coated. And then what we want to do now is you want to get some butter. So I'm using Avonmore unsalted butter. So I want about 25 grams of this butter. And then what we want to do is just melt it. Drop it into a small pot. And I'm just going to let it melt. That's it. Once your butter is dissolved, all you do then is pour your butter into your flour, sugar and nut mixture and you just mix it till it all comes together. And then you get your hands in and you just rub it all together till you get this lovely crumbly texture. So I'm just going to add a touch more butter into this, okay, just because I want it to come together a little bit better. So you have nice bigger pieces of crumble. Okay, so that's perfect for me now. So all you have to do now is pour it onto a baking tray, spread it out, 
and just pop that into oven 180 for 10 minutes and it'll be lovely and golden. And occasionally you can stir it around if need be, depending on the quantity that you're doing. All the excess moisture has um, evaporated away from the actual apples. You just want to stir it then, just to break them up ever so gently. Just like so. And then just, you can pop it into a little dish, ready to be used. And again, the beauty of that is you can have this done the day before. You don't need to do it on the day. But you'll find with the rhubarb, the rhubarb contains an awful lot of excess juice. So once you take the lid off it, then you want to turn the heat up really, really high. And you want to evaporate some of this excess moisture that's in it. Because at the moment it's quite a soupy consistency. And you want to get rid of all that water. Because at the end of the day, water tastes of nothing. So when you evaporate and reduce that water, you really concentrate the rhubarb flavour. So it'll work really well with your dessert. So now this rhubarb is... All the excess moisture has reduced off it. You just have the pulp. You can see it's completely broken down now. It's cooked through. And that again is ready to be taken off to one side to be used later. So now this crumble is baked, okay, and that's it. You just want that golden colour on it, okay. You don't want any more than that. Too dark, it might get too bitter, okay. So just nice golden colour like so. I have your little serving dish. So what I do, spoon some of your apple compote into the centre. So I just make a little well in the centre. Because I like the fact of you can have different flavours and different bites. You're not just mixing the apple and rhubarb together. It all just blends into one. So I make a little well in the centre like that. A little hole. And then in that little hole I put my rhubarb compote into the centre of it. Then to finish it off, what you want to do is get your crumble and you sprinkle your crumble mixture over the top. Now, don't put too much on, okay? You want to be able to see all them colours, okay? You want to see a bit of the pink. You want to have the fruit. It is a fruit dessert. Just put a little bit of crumble. And then, as I said, a dessert like this cannot, cannot, and I be eaten without delicious Avamore custard, okay? So for me, you just spoon it on right into the centre of it. And you know what I do? I just get it out and I fill up the pouring jug and I leave it on the table because I can never have enough of it. And I just keep pouring it on and on and on and on until it's all gone. So I leave that to one side and then to be extra indulgent, some freshly whipped Avonmore cream just to finish it off. So you just have the, the cream and the custard. You can have the hot custard, the cold cream, the warm crumble. It's beautiful.